Just a real quick video to show you how to make rhubarb wine since it's rhubarb season. I'm going to be using four cups of chopped rhubarb, four cups of honey, I'm going to need 12 cups of filtered water, two gallon jars and two fermenting lids because this will ferment for six to eight weeks. I need four teaspoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice and I am going to need a cup of my homemade juniper berry wild ute brewer's yeast that I have in another video that I will link in the description box below. It is very bubbly and very active and it's ready to go. Let's split this up into the two half gallon jars, two cups of rhubarb in each one, and I'm doing this instead of starting off with a gallon carboy just because of the narrow neck of the carboy. Um, I'll transfer this for the secondary ferment into a gallon carboy, but the narrow neck of those makes it difficult to clean fruit and other chunks out of there. Plus it's got to go right back in there anyway for the secondary ferment. So I figured this is easier. Although I am running out of fermenting lids, so I'm going to have to get more because I've got so many ferments going on right now. So that's about half in that jar. Let's put the other half in this jar. Make this quicker. All right, I had just enough in, with a little bit left over in these two big jugs of honey to put two cups in each half gallon for a, four cups of honey total to make a gallon of rhubarb wine. Now we need two teaspoon, four teaspoons total of fresh squeezed lemon juice. So I need two teaspoons in each half gallon one, two, and one, two. Now we need a cup total for a gallon of my homemade brewer's yeast. So I'm going to filter that amount into the measuring cup. And I'm going to put these back in once I get them filtered out because I want to keep this going. I won't be using it all. Lids going back on. And this has been fermenting for over a month, so this has been in the fridge. I don't want to have it poop out before I want to use it again. So back in the fridge. That leaves me with this one cup, and I'm just going to estimate and pour half in one jar, half in the other. It smells so good and it's nice and fizzy. So we got about a half a cup in each one now. Let's top it off with some filtered water to within an inch of the top. Be a great time to change my Brita filter. And we'll get our fermenting lids on here. And today is June 5th, 4th. Today is June 4th, my son's 19th birthday. So I dialed the lid to four. This lid is on four. Now we're going to let these ferment in a dark, cool place. I'm going to try to get these mixed up a little bit. These are going to ferment in a dark cool place. I put them under my kitchen sink, although I'm kind of running out of room there, so this might have to go to the basement pantry, which is fine, but uh, I want to tip them, stir them, agitate them, mix them up once a day, approximately, for that six weeks. 
and then I'll strain this out and do a secondary ferment with no solids in that gallon carboy and we'll do the secondary ferment for a couple of weeks before we start drinking on it. And it would keep longer than that likely too, if you, depending on your storage conditions. But there we go, that one's all mixed up. Let's do the same to this one. I didn't think I was gonna have a lot of rhubarb because I don't have a big enough yard to grow it. Haven't found a spot to put it. My next door neighbors that were renting before they moved out killed off what was in their backyard. So that was my previous source. I got a little bit from my mom's friend for rhubarb, blueberry, rhubarb galette, which I made another one today from my uh, fresh pork lard. But my neighbors down the street, I saw I had a huge batch of rhubarb. So I went down and asked and they said, take it, just take it all. <laughs> So that's why I have a ton of rhubarb. So I'm making this rhubarb wine. I made another rhubarb blueberry galette. I am going to make two batches of rhubarb jelly later, and then I will probably freeze whatever is left. So there we go. Rhubarb wine started. And then let me show you. This is what I made from blueberries I had left over, plus some more chopped rhubarb. And if you want to see how to make this using my secret ingredient that I made at home, you can click on the next video.